Okay, so I thought that I might do some YouTube videos about what I'm doing here. So I came with the idea that I can try to do some kind of primitive, very simple physical simulation using the Unity game engine, uh, especially because it became available for Linux relatively recently. Um, so I basically started here with a rather small box that I'm actually currently considering turning into something more sphere-like shape because sometimes the atoms tend to stuck in the corners of simulation though it's not critical and if enough impulse applied they still go out of the corners so i have a set of atoms which are 21 hydrogen atom at the moment they all initially spawn in a single point and they all have some initial force that applied to them through the separate force script um, so yeah why don't i just go in and start it and then show you how it goes maybe explaining piece by piece so yeah we'll just start the simulation and we have our 21 hydrogen atom that are just sort of floating and bowing in, in it and as you can see they're slowly losing their total kinetic energy uh, Okay, let me just introduce some small heat that they would not lose all of the energy while I'm talking. So basically, um, I'm really simplifying it in terms of physics and uh, I myself is not a, that deep into the physics and chemistry, so i definitely losing out some details and properties. So, yeah, obviously one point. 0.1 is a bit too much. Let's try to half it because we don't want system to increase the temperature too much. So, but basically concept is what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to make a, a simple uh, simulation of physical or like simple chemical system where I have atoms which are having the energy in form of the uh, kinetic energy that they're transferring to each other via the heats and then uh, I want to also implement covalent, ionic uh, and other forms of bonds uh, so that they can eventually create the hydrogen molecules and maybe even some uh, more complex. So right now I basically use the simple uh, bits and pieces of the Unity engine itself without needing too much code. So we have a physical simulation where every atom just have uh, a rigid body and it has a circle collider they're not affected by gravity really uh, they all have an absolute buoyancy um, and if i will remove the heat source from the system and heat source is this red circle um, the system will start slowly losing energy so this happens uh, because whenever they hit each other sort of uh, head to head they are losing some energy uh, of their movement so they are losing their kinetic energy and in the real world this loss of kinetic energy should have been uh, transformed into a heat or light energy or other forms of radiation so the energy would be emitted outwards though in current implementation of the simulation the energy is just simply lost what is really not that good um, so the thing is that actually um, if you just make it with a basic uh, unity thing you know, like with just simple collisions it will still be losing the energy but not as fast as in my simulation and reason here is that I actually found out that in certain uh, collisions it's actually somehow gaining the energy what's a bit weird because uh, like it shouldn't be gaining the energy it should be uh, trying to keep the energy or in equilibrium or slowly lose because it will be radiated outside of the uh, simulation so i did solve the problem of uh, it like generating more energy and as a result losing energy too slow through this um, on collision enter on collision exit where I'm basically 
calculating uh, what's the original energy when collision happens and then when collision finishes I'm calculating the result collision that unity made its total magnitude and if I see that it's somehow larger than the previous magnitude of collision I'm just clumping the values to make sure that there is no excess energy out of this process um, it still somehow sometimes gains the energy from somewhere and I'm not really sure where it comes from it may be my mistake or lack of my knowledge about the unity engine or maybe I just miss something so yeah but anyway right now uh, my main priority from this probably would be uh, to like this heat source is nice and it kind of allows me to control what happens in a simulation rather well like I can for example go and say let's add shitload of heat in the system and let's just wait for one of them to gain in and we'll see what will happen fast yeah so they exchanging energy really fast so even if one of the atoms got into the heat source and got energy it will transfer this energy to the, uh, the items cre like really fast so and the system will start growing in energy like doom 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 very very, very fast so and it's actually I found out that if you put in the system to the very high energy by some reason in unity they just even if you turn off the heat source they just start gaining on energy from nowhere so I guess there are some problems with unity physics generation they're definitely there um, yeah so yeah let's go them make them go even better Yeah, so it's kind of simple guess. So yeah, I was talking about what's my next goal. My next goal is basically to make sure that simulation is much more stable without this external heat source. Uh, to make them... Whenever they collide and whenever they lose kinetic energy, to make this energy somehow expressed uh, as a heat energy, or light energy so and it would be as a heat energy as a result applied to the neighboring uh, atoms or molecules in future uh, and therefore it will be increasing their speed so it's a bit hard to do especially to do it in a performant way because I basically need to when the collision happens and when the collision ends I need to calculate how much energy was lost uh, from the velocities then I need to identify the sphere of effect and what atoms would be affected and uh, then apply this heat energy to them by pre increasing their velocities so yeah. this is basically how this one works at the moment so it basically just when they get in the red sphere they are increasing uh, the red sphere just increases the velocity of the atoms so I wouldn't say that it increases them right because right now it's just linear increase whenever you got in a sphere while if it's a proper heat source it should be more like okay you theoretically can make this kind of heat source in the real world but it's too linearly spread so you mo mostly would probably get like a, a square distance uh, loss so the further you are from the center of the red sphere the the, uh, the lower should be the energy increase it's actually very interesting what I just found because it seems that when I'm uh, recording the video the num the frame rate of this thing is lower and as a result because the heat is applied not by time but by a frame rate the values are getting low and it's actually a bug because this means that the performance of this thing is depends on a performance of my computer at the moment and it's definitely need to be fixed so I basically just need to change the way how the heat source works so instead of just applying it per frame I need to do some calculation based on the time so yeah probably I can just add the function of 
time here and it should work fine so it wouldn't be the, uh, dependent on frame how much time did I'm recording this thing for already? okay I have no idea for how long I'm recording it but I think that I can just try to do it uh, now so it I can just finish it together I guess the video length should be still less than 10 minutes around 10 minutes and that's how I want to keep it so I uh, yeah I'll just introduce uh, this thing unity time I don't remember this stuff so I google everything because I'm working with unity not all the time capture delta time shows the play I think the one that I need is a delta time right so yeah so it would be time delta time yeah okay let's try it it's still working I think so um, boom, 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 boom. so yeah as far as I understand everything that I need is just probably will add it better to the end time the time do I need to include anything here? No, it doesn't look like it. Delta time. So now it should be frame independent if I understand it right. Let's see. Oh. And we will apply our heat source. Let's start with one. Doesn't look like it's effect. Okay, it sli slowly raises the energy, but yeah, now it's when it's not frame by frame, it's actually much more modest increase. Let's say we'll go with 10. Before, when it was frame by frame, it was just like a huge thing, but now I want to see how it will be. Uh, yeah. yeah, it seems that it made the value changes much more stable and not frame dependent so it's now much gains the energy much slower but it does gain it okay let's increase it to something more ridiculous 30 okay good now we're gaining energy much faster we go into the ludicrous speed yeah Yeah, I would not want to wait. Let's go even faster. Let's add, add so much energy in this thing. I like sometimes noticing how there is like these slow and lazy atoms, and they're like, oh, I don't want to go fast. And then a dozen of atoms from different sides just hit it, and it's like, no, you're going fast. You have no choice. You must have energy. It's like this lone guy. You can kind of try to track him. Okay, so yeah, we can see that system kind of sometimes lose energy when they hit each other, but mostly it gains the speed. Let's go. Look it. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, let me just pause it for a second and see if me pausing the video recording would somehow speed it up. Okay, so that's interesting. I don't know why, but by some reason, before I started this recording, I was always able to bring the system total temperature to even over 1000. But now I just can't. And this is very ridiculous for me. So like I can raise it to like very high values. And it's actually, yeah, it goes high, but it goes high now much more, more than much more proportionate. So I guess to get to one, like, and it's, we also can see that the higher the energy gets, the higher can be the drops and losses because they hit each other much harder. So, okay, let's try to get it over a thousand. But it's really interesting how, despite of the lot of heat being pumped into the system, it also manages to lose a lot of heat. Just let's get it over a thousand. Just want over a thousand. 
Yep, yep. We have over a thousand of heat in a system at all, and it kind of moves very, very fast now. Yeah. So yeah, this is the concept. Uh, I'm not sure if I will be continuing making these videos because honestly, I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, it's sometimes interesting to make it this kind of recording even just for myself to show up what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah hopefully next time when I'll be making a video I will already be able to turn some of this energy into the when they collide when the two atoms or two molecules collide with each other so that they would express the energy as a heat and it would be applied to the surrounding atoms increasing the energy and therefore speed therefore making the system first lose much less energy uh, than it is right now and second to make the simulation more realistic and therefore permit for the covalent bonds because this heat exchange will allow to stimulate um, molecules creation and molecules breakdown and also potential for the chain reactions yeah, yeah i think this is it yeah. thanks for watching if you've been watching i don't think a lot of people will be watching this thing anyway but yeah if you have fun and interest in physical simulation, chemical simulations on a low level as me, I guess you can just follow my journey. Thank you. Bye.